I've been learning a very, very valuable lesson lately. You know what that lesson is? Observe. There is a fine line between quirky and eccentric. And I have a tendency, like this arrow right here, to jog up to that fine line and jump right over it with complete abandonment. How do I do this? Well, take, for example, my phobia of Netflix. Phobia of Netflix? Yeah, that's what most people have said. What are you talking about? Well, here's the thing. I realized that I don't like the idea of streaming, this idea of just some computer server, who knows where, at Netflix headquarters, which I looked up, actually, I think it's in California, is just allowing you to just stream this, these TV programs and movies right to your computer or TV with no idea of how that data is held. It's just not there. You don't own it or have any possession of it or can't have it in your hands. I much, much rather prefer DVDs. And I also get those DVDs from the library. Now, as I was externally processing this with my housemates and other friends who I'm eternally grateful to because they just are willing to listen as I work through all this, and more on that in a minute. But, I love the library. I've loved it since I was five years old and my dad got me my first library card. I have never in 21 years not had at least one item out on my library card. But I realized that my fear and terror with Netflix is connected to my love of the library. You see, less and less people are going to the library to get movies and TV show DVDs because they can just stream them right to their computer or smart TV if you have like an Apple TV or something like that and they don't need to go to the library anymore and the thought on that is just the library could go away especially now with ebooks and 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 you know Spotify which don't get me wrong I love but you don't need to go to the library to get music anymore either and it's like oh gosh, it's just crumbling. And I realized that the connection between my dislike of Netflix and my love for the library is a direct connection. But friends, you know what that is? That is eccentric. Yeah, I'm pretty eccentric. But you know what? My friends, love me despite of that and i am eternally grateful to them i have the best four housemates in the world they just are patient with me and they give me a hard time about these things but they don't disown me or not want to spend time with me because of a quirk like that same same with my friends at, at church and and all over when they hear of this they they laugh and they think well you're crazy but we still want to hang out with you. They don't run away from you. And that's really, really cool. You know, it reminds me of one of my favorite quotes from a, a really awesome movie. There's uh, Almost Famous, directed by my favorite writer and director, Cameron Crowe, who, trust me, I could go on and on about. But it's by this character, Lester Bangs, and he says, the only true currency in this bankrupt world is what you share with someone else when you're uncool. Well, currently quirkiness and eccentricities are really not cool things. But when someone loves you in spite of those quirks and eccentricities, you really, really feel profoundly loved. And it, and it moves you. Uh, you know? And I think that that is very much true of what, what Jesus does for each and every one of us when he comes into our heart and he becomes our Lord and Savior. Paul says in 1 Timothy that, uh, you know, the saying is trustworthy and of full acceptance that Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And that is so true. Jesus looks at us when we were sinners and apart from him. And he still says, I want you. And I love you. And I'm coming to get you. That's really, really profound and really cool. 
and should give in us a desire to love him and, and, and seek him in prayer all the more. That's what friendship illustrates for us in this life. It's, it's a gift from God. It, it, it's, it's True friendship is people that look at you and go, you know, in spite of the mess that is your life, and the, in spite of the fact that you, you don't have it all together, I love you and want to spend time with and be in community with you. And that is probably to me one of the biggest and most important reasons to be involved in a local church. That, that community of, of I love you and I'm going to accept you for your quirks and in spite of the fact that you're a sinner, I'm going to encourage you to change and encourage you to, to not sin and to, to call you out on that, but do that in love. But I'm here to walk along beside you. And that's what I've had this past, coming up on a year now, living with four other Christian men, is that just genuine encouragement, but also just willing, willingness to call me out when I need to be called out on things I'm doing wrong. It's pretty cool seeing how... My friends love me in spite of the fact that I'm a sinner. Just like Lester Bangs in Almost Famous. You could almost make that statement say the true currency in this bankrupt world is what you share with someone else when you're a sinner. Because when someone loves you in spite of that sin, but also loves you enough to call you out of that sin, you experience some pretty crazy things. That's all for now, friends.